we really believe in relevance and creativity. And uh, within our company, basically, we use the, those discussion uh, tools uh, to, uh, to bring insight, knowledge, information to our team so they can work and do creative work that is more relevant, like we hope uh, this uh, uh, installation today is both creative and very relevant to Swire Properties business, for example. For the next hour, we want to explore the notion of art and travel. Take your mind back to the 16th century, if you can. This was a time when fashionable young aristocrats uh, visited places like Paris, Venice, Florence, and above all, Rome. It was considered a, a seminal tour uh, to cap one's education, to learn about the arts, to learn about culture, and really uh, to, to move on to adulthood. Fast forward to today, here we are in a modern, fantastic city where people from all over the world have flown in to consume art, to explore art, to explore new themes and ideas, and perhaps elevate our senses, if only for a few hours, to something greater. The main principle of Grand Tour is the betterment of your mind and your, your cultural understanding. I think it is quite opposite that we're talking about that topic here in Art Basel. And, I, and I'd like to think that that principle of self-betterment still applies to many people who are going to these art fairs. Well, I, I remember reading a, an article very early on in my um, travel publishing career that um, talked about the chemical that's released when you are in a foreign place for the first time. It's the thing that happens when your mind is processing a whole load of new information all at once you know, incredibly different smells, different maps, different language, um, different noises, you know. So there is, a, there is literally a, a drug that we become addicted to, uh, many of us in, in, the, in the travel space, um, where you're just processing this new information um, and it's giving you a very physical high and, and sort of um, and response. Our desire to see, to see beyond where we live is very, very deeply ingrained. You know, absolutely art and architecture um, is one of the sort of key prisms through which that experience gets, gets manifest. And I think we can all remember um, finding, you know, sometimes you, you, you seek it out and you know it's there and you, and you access it, but other times you might just come across it, as it were, by, by chance. Those moments of epiphany, I agree, are some of the best moments of travel. So I think there, since the 70s, there's been great interest in the Asian region, Asia Pacific region for travel. But I think nowadays, like Simon said, um, we have a lot more choice and there's much more contemporary art and architecture that one can partake and engage with. Perhaps given your experience at MoMA and elsewhere, you can talk about the explosion in art tourism in Asia, to Asia, uh, from Asia. You know, what is really noticeable and interesting to me is the intra-regional travel that it has increased tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. I recently did a small exhibition with colleagues at Parasite thinking about the 1960s in the region comparing between um, uh, Taiwan and Japan and Korea. And it was really meaning meaningful for us to think about uh, the, the art scenes of these three countries in Hong Kong because, you know, that's only a half a century ago. But travels between these places were not so um, so easy. And this situation only began to change for most people, I think, what, 1990s or so? And this, since then, it has um, escalated at such a speed, and then every year you see the differences, right? Um, and so there, that's the general trend, and um, maybe it is only in the last few years, maybe five years or so, that people are traveling to these different places specifically for the purpose of the enjoyment of art. I noticed such a significant increase in the number of Chinese tourists going to Venice Biennale, for instance. I mean, it was so noticeable, so there has been such explosion that happened that crossed the threshold um, and literally it's in the last five years so who knows what's going to happen next year. The, if you think about Mona, the Museum of Old and New Art in, in Tasmania, that has single-handedly transformed visitation into um, one of the most beautiful sort of states of Australia. 30% um, of all people that go to Tasmania see the museum, which if you think about that collection is extraordinary. Um, so actually what you get is this extraordinary mix of 
Tasmanian locals rubbing shoulders with a whole load of Atarati from Sydney and Melbourne, with a whole load of really eager um, sort of Chinese young hipsters. It is just the most extraordinary scene in this very, very, very remote part of the world in real terms. So, you know, you can see how art, art just completely transforms the, tra the travel landscape and tourism for Tasmania. Uh, we're glad that your travels have brought you to the Swire booth, to the Mark and Chantel uh, Salon discussion. And please join me in thanking each of our panelists for their expert views today. Thank you.